This video is brought to you by VanTracker. VanTracker is a remote automatic kill switch and GPS tracker with geofence movement detection, start detection, or door open detection. Go to thevantracker.com to learn about our 60 day money back guarantee and two months of free cellular service. All right, pull off your wheel. And uh, so this is a 46 millimeter. I got this guy and um, my uh, breaker bar and a length of pipe to go around the breaker bar. Getting it back on may be a different story. Um, anyway, this guy comes off and then the hub. Uh, definitely want to turn off your parking brake. <clears throat> Obviously chalk everything. Put your stands there. And then this should just come off. Oh, right, the hub's coming with it. Um, anyway, we'll deal with that in just a second. So this is probably how it's gonna come off. The drum and the hub in the middle. These are two pieces. But it's extremely difficult uh, to get them apart. So I'm gonna show you what I did in just a second. And then here's the brakes. All right, so here's my setup. I did this successfully on the other side. <clears throat> I realize it's not the safest thing in the world to do, but I don't have a two-ton press, so this is, I'm gonna use the car as a press. Got my cinder block here. Got a piece of wood under there to catch the hub when it pops out. And I'm gonna put a couple pieces of wood under here. And I got my jack stand in the back to catch it just in case. Uh, in case this thing fails, which there's no reason it should. And I'm gonna lower the car onto it and pop out the hub. This worked perfectly fine on the other side. I, all right, that worked great. Just lowered it slowly and heard a big clang, which was the hub. I mean, sorry, which was the drum. And the hub looks fine. Whoops. And the bottom looks fine. I had that piece and just kind of. So there was a couple. There was a debate on <clears throat> the sum uh, about, uh, between a couple guys about the shoes and putting a spacer in here on the bottom. <coughs> and it's not a lot, but yeah, my shoes actually are more worn at the top. So I'm gonna try that. I would definitely love to have a better parking brake. Uh, anyway, yeah, stronger, stronger parking brake. I'm gonna take a. I think if you can do one side at a time, that's definitely great, so you can use the other side for reference. I'm just taking a lot of pictures so that I have a reference for what it used to look like, because <clears throat> I already took the other side off. I'm gonna uh, put in all the bearings at the same time, and I have to borrow a tool, so I want to do it all at the same time. I <clears throat> found that the uh, springs that came with my new hardware set were just too big. Even fully compressed, it they wouldn't work. So I reused the springs. That's the only piece of hardware that I'm reusing. Basically, everything else, the hardware kit, the cylinder, and the shoes are all getting replaced, and the drum, of course, <clears throat> and the bearings. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna take this, uh, take the brake line off. That's 11 millimeters. You're gonna lose some brake fluid, so get a catch pan. Put your leader cap on there. <clears throat> Make sure it's not uh, leaking. When you start taking this stuff off, it might start squirting out the back a little. All right, get that stuff off there any way you can. And um, then you're gonna have, these guys are 17. This guy on the back is, uh, of course, 13. Typical. You want to try to avoid breathing this stuff since it contains asbestos. All right, I hit it with some PB, some blaster, and um, work these things loose with a couple of good wax. Heat would probably be a better choice, but I don't have that. And now there's this, this thing, this little holder is welded to the backing plate. And, but there's this little pin here that attaches it to the hub and it is 
just fits by force into both this thing and the hub and you're supposed to be able to just whack the hell out of it and knock it out so let's see what happens so that completely sucked <clears throat> after uh, putting the blaster on it beating the hell out of it from both sides putting heat on it with my little butane torch which doesn't produce a lot of heat what I ended up doing this is the same thing I did on the other side and I don't recommend it if there's any other possible way I put those screws in a little bit put my wrench in here and basically stood on it and then felt it budge a little bit and then went back the other way on the other side I tried uh, getting a uh, flat head in there on the back and I just ended up screwing up this part of the backing plate so anyway <clears throat> After doing that several times back and forth, uh, then I just pounded it out from the back. And there's this little post. It goes in the bottom hole here. And that took like a, an hour or something. If you had some high power torch, probably be a lot better choice. All right, to uh, start off with, I loosened the bolts. Uh, I'm gonna do the CV axle out through the hub. Um, basically out through the trailing arm this way as opposed to uh, loosening it in here if you've anyway and just pulling the hub off with the stub axle I'm doing it uh, like I've heard other people say and uh, anyway since I'm gonna have both sides off at the same time I loosened all those uh, those triple square bolts in there or some people have allen bolts in there so that I can take it off and take the thing all the way through. So the next thing is to take off these four. Uh, I think they're tightened to 131 foot-pounds and uh, they are 22. 22. Oop, yeah. 22 millimeter. Yeah, I forgot to say when I uh, did that it pretty, pretty well screwed up those 17 millimeter bolts. I'm probably gonna have to find new ones. On both sides, these came off real nice and smooth, uh, but on the first side, when I put it back together, and then I ended up taking it back apart again, um, it didn't feel like, I mean, I put it back onto spec with my torque wrench, but when I took it back off, it did not feel like it took 131 foot-pounds to get it off, so I'm gonna put some uh, Loctite on there when I put them back on. When you're, when you're taking the bolts out of this CV joint, <laughs> Uh, make sure you bottom them out when you are uh, putting that triple square bit in there make sure you get it in there as deeply as possible give it a few taps on the end before you start cranking it out with your ratchet or your whatever you're taking them out with alright now um, anyway I got them loose, so I did that part. They were just real loose now, so I loosened all of them except for a couple. The hub, uh, these bolts are a little bit loose. So when you take that last one out, you got your boot. You got your boot, and you got your joint. And the joint's about, I don't know, an inch thick or something like that. And the boot kind of jams onto the joint, so it's probably gonna come out all as one piece. But um, when I take those last couple bolts out, the thing's gonna fall, and it's kinda heavy, and you don't wanna screw up your CV joint. So anyway, I'm going to uh, take the CV joint out over there, and then just rest it on something. Take the bolts off of the hub, and then when it's loose, just kinda pick it up and pull it all the way out. That should be pretty easy. All right, now you're gonna put a a little dog poo bag around that thing and around the ends of the, the exposed CV joint to keep anything out of there. I'm gonna go clean these guys up. Yeah. All right, so I did not bother uh, loosening these. So this is the last Jerry rig thing I have for you. I got my hub seated. I'm gonna, well, put the hub in the wheel there. And then I'm going to take this guy and drop him in the hub. And now I'm going to take these bolts off because they're still torqued to 44 foot-pounds and I don't 
to have a vise to keep them <coughs> to keep the whole thing still while I'm taking them out. <laughs>